Hello and welcome to Wisdom Trek. This is Guthrie Chamberlain and I'm your guide to wisdom. Thank you for joining us for our seven day a week, seven minutes of wisdom podcast. Each day I will provide you with bite-sized nuggets of wisdom that if consumed and applied will become part of the very fabric of who you are. As with any significant changes in life, it will take time, but the changes that will result from this wisdom will start to take root and grow into a large and solid tree. This is day 51 of our trek, and today we are going to look at how to deal with those issues in life that are thrust on us, especially when we have little or no control over them. We are recording our podcast from our studios at the Big House in Marietta, Ohio. Being able to work from our newly renovated office on the second floor is a real blessing. The new large windows provide a nice view to work from. I will include a couple of the pictures of our new office view, so please check out the journal at wisdom-trek.com. After spending the last nine days of focusing on how changing your thinking can dramatically change your life, today we are going to put our newly learned information into practice. So let's break camp today and head out on the trail. As we are hiking along today, with our new knowledge gained from the 12 waypoints, our plan is to make use of this knowledge on our 20-mile trek today. The first part of the trail is going rather smooth, and we're making great progress. We find a nice clearing and break for lunch before heading out again. As we're heading down the trail, suddenly we see dark clouds in the horizons that look rather ominous in the direction that we are heading. But we must move on toward our destination. As we continue on, the wind picks up and starts to blow dust and twigs against us. We don't like the looks of where we're heading into, but we press forward. Soon the rain starts, small drops at first, then larger drops, and then sheets of rain plummeting us. Before long, it becomes much more difficult to keep solid footing, but we continue forward. As we head down into the ravine, about a hundred yards in front of us, we hear and then see a rush of water from a flash flood. It completely obliterates the trail that we're supposed to take. Now what do we do? We don't want to go back, for that does not lead to our destination. And for now, we can't go forward. At this time, we don't have a safe trail in front of us. Is it time to panic, to give up, to wish we had never headed out today? Now none of those options will help. And such it is with life sometimes. When we run into those unforeseen events, we must put into practice all of the thinking skills that we have just learned this last week. Crisis and hardships are part of everyone's life, and some of them are unavoidable. I've lived enough years to realize that the crisis, for many, are certainly inflated due to the unwise choices that are made. I have found that some people do like to live in continual drama because it gives them a sense of purpose, attention, or sense of accomplishment by having something to combat. I see this in personal and business situations quite frequently. Now, regardless if the crises are self-imposed or completely out of your control, how you deal with it from this point on is your choice. The tools that we gain each day on Wisdom Trek will help navigate life when it becomes too treacherous as in our story today. None of us are immune to crisis, whether it's health, wealth, relationship, or other types of crisis. Some of the crises can be inflamed by our own decisions or choices in each of these areas, but others are completely out of our control. I'd like to share a story on a personal and business level. We have recently experienced two such storms. Due to the lack of sales on one client, they were not able to retain our services on a monthly basis. This was considered somewhat crucial. And within a month of that, another client that is in the oil and gas industry has been hit hard with a 60% reduction on crude oil and national gas prices over the process of the last 12 months. While we are going to maintain this client, based on our collaboration with him, we have agreed to a 60% reduction in our fees, at least until the oil and gas industry recovers. Now, these storms in our business life also affect us personally, but they were both outside our control, and they were in two completely unrelated market segments. No one in either of these segments really anticipated such a drop-off. We have experienced enough business cycles to prepare for and to understand that these issues will happen. As they do, it also impacts our personal lives. But because of this, we know that there is always sunshine after the storms. With some pre-planning and by the grace of God, a construction project in Arizona that has been in planning stages for over three years has finally been approved and construction is beginning this month. So that will help some. And Paula and I have planned diligently to make sure that we do have options and choices when these tempests of life do hit us. So what are our options when the storms of life do strike us? Well, number one, we could give up, throw in the towel, and grovel in the fact that life has done us wrong, while we can retreat and head back to a life that is unsatisfying and safe. Or number two, we could become paralyzed with fear, not wanting to advance forward and too scared to go back. 
we could become resolute that once we're out of this storm that we'll never take a risk again. Or number three, we could just suck it up and deal with it. If we plan, knowing that life does have its ups and downs, its sunshines and its storms, its pleasures and its pains, then we can plan during the good times so that we can weather through the bad times. Now in this third point, Paula says that suck it up and deal with it was one of my mottos when she and the kids ever ran into issues. Now, I don't recall saying those exact words, but that is certainly an impression that was ingrained in their minds. It has become somewhat of a joke between us whenever we run into rough issues, and I do believe I'm becoming a little bit more compassionate with age and wisdom. With all joking aside, though, we do need to deal with life as it is, not as we wish it to be. If we're having difficulties in our life, here are the steps that we need in order to handle those storms. First, we must analyze our situation and see if our current problems are based on the choices that we have made. If yes, or partially so, then learn to make wiser choices in the future. This is done through gaining wisdom. Second, plan now and during the sunny times so that when the storms do come, you're better prepared and able to handle them. And third, realize that after every storm, the sun will shine again. Rejoice in the sunny times and take advantage of them. And then, based on your planning in advance, you can dance in the rain. As we plan on how we're going to get out of our predicament that we experienced at the start of today's trek, I will leave you with these encouraging words from the Apostle Paul's letter to the church at Philippi in chapter 4, verses 4 through 8. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I will say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Well, that will finish our podcast for today. If you've missed any of our previous podcasts, please check out Wisdom Trek at iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or at wisdom-trek.com. Tomorrow we'll continue our trek. We will figure out a way to move forward on our trail that's been washed out, but realizing that there are no guarantees in life. So please join us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, creating a legacy. And if you enjoy these daily doses of wisdom, these small nuggets that we consume, I encourage each of you to help us in the following five ways. One, leave your name and email address on our website at the bottom right-hand corner of any page in the sidebar. This will allow us to update you with special information about Wisdom Trek. Two, leave us feedback about the podcast at wisdom-trek.com. Three, please subscribe to iTunes or Stitcher so it will be downloaded for you automatically each day. Four, if you haven't done so already, please leave us a rating so we can gain exposure to other people about Wisdom Trek. And number five, share with your family and friends to journey with us each day on Wisdom Trek. Thank you for allowing me to serve you in this way, to come into your homes each day, and share with you a little bit of the wisdom nuggets that I have gained. The journal for this podcast can be found at wisdom-trek.com, where you also have pictures, tweetable quotes, wisdom nuggets, and free resources. As we take this trek together, let us always live abundantly or fully, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy the journey, and to create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.